What is up, everybody? My name is Alex, and this is the basics of fine-tuning ChatGPT. Let's do this. A lot has been said recently about fine-tuning your own ChatGPT model with your data so that it becomes more accurate. Well, it turns out it's not that big of a deal. It's actually, what, three, four steps? So today, we're going to take a look at how to execute this. All right, so before we get into, you know, the steps of how to do this, let's first take a look at the results. How different are the answers that ChatGPT gives you before and after the fine tuning? So let's do a simple test. Here's a make chat uh, GPT create a completion model. This is my fine tuned model. This is my system prompt. And this is my user question. Uh, so first, let's see how it um, responds to this prompt based on um, the typical ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo. Or, I mean, you could use any one of them. But yeah, let's, let's use that one. Okay, and run. Choices, collection, message. You see, it gives you like this huge answer. Um, Athens is approximately blah, 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 from away from Vienna. So if you plan on walking, make sure you pack some comfortable shoes and a lot of patience. Alternatively, yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know, a uh, sassy answer. But now let's try our fine-tuned model. Okay, and run. Here we go. You see, much different, way, way more succinct. And that is a result of uh, training, of fine tuning. So now let's go ahead and take a look at how to set this up. Again, this is a slightly different video compared to what we've done in the past. The aim here is to take you through the steps, but the application is really unique to everybody's needs. So. Without any further ado, let's jump in. Let's build this thing. Also, guys, if you want to follow along and you kind of need a shortcut with what I'm about to show you, there is a download link down below to a copy of the scenario for um, Make, or um, AKA, I think they call them blueprints. So yeah, check this out if you need it. Otherwise, let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is to prepare our data set. I mean, my data set that I'm gonna use for this uh, particular video is literally the data set that uh, ChatGPT uh, provides us with. I mean, it's not, a, they're not providing it, but essentially it's one the one that they use uh, to explain it. So it's this particular thing here. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna open up uh, Sublime Text. I'm gonna create a new tab, paste this in, and this is roughly what it looks like. It's uh, Jason with a twist. So then I'm going to make a lot more copies of this. And of course, if you're going to be using this for your own intents and purposes, obviously you're going to have a lot more data. But the general idea behind this is really simple. You create messages that are based on the role. So role, system, the content is such role user the content is such and of course all of this is separated by commas and then role assistant the content is such right so you're giving it a an example of who the system is what the question is and what the typical answer should be and then you basically create a new row and rinse and repeat the same thing right now we have three rows but there's nothing to prevent you from literally taking these three rows you need at least if i remember correctly 10 examples so this is three but uh, the best uh, possible outcomes are seen after you've given it like 50 to 100 examples so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy all of this and i'm just going to simulate a lot of data so I'm just gonna 
paste it down so that I have a bunch of examples. Just a bunch of examples, maybe like 80. And this is really repetitive, but it's good enough. So then we save this. And let's save it as test3.json-l. JSON lines, in other words. Save. Perfect. That's it. Then, jumping back into make, what we need to do now is we need to upload that file to OpenAI. So, the way that I'm going to do it, I have an Airtable instance ready. I'm going to create a new row in my training data. I'm going to upload that uh, test attachment. Here we go. Excellent. Now that we've got this, let's steal this particular record ID. Copy that. And let's go to this first step. Here, I'm going to paste my record ID. And I'm going to see if it's going to work. Perfect. It fetches it. Nice. My next step is mapped right i'm mapping that attachment url to this get file http module um, right after that we have a http call to open ai and we need to go to this url and then the method is going to be post you have to provide authorization and then bearer space and your api key that you can fetch from your profile settings or something like that in your open a uh, open ai account then we have to set this up to be a multi-part form data uh, first field type text key is purpose value is fine-tuned then the next item is file the key is file and then just map the file that you get from module number nine and then next, don't forget to parse response. Okay, once you've done that, then you need to get the status of that file. I mean, technically, as soon as you get it, you need to save that uh, file um, ID so that we know that it has been processed. But ultimately, if you want to check this, you can. In fact, you know what? Let's just run this now so we can fetch the file ID. There we go data this is our file id and as you can see right now the status is uploaded i'm gonna jump in this get status of a file paste my new file id the method is get authorization goes without saying same thing and parse the response let's check this out and the status is processed fantastic we've done step one now second step is to create the fine tuning job itself. So here we need to insert this URL up here. Method is post authorization, same as before. The content type is application JSON, right? Again, still in our headers. And then the body type is raw. Content type is JSON. The training file, here's what you need to provide us with, right? It's the training file that just got processed. So we need to paste that in. The model uh, chat GPT 3.5 Turbo is what we need to input here. Very soon there's going to be support for chat GPT 4. And you need to add a suffix. Mine was CM test A. This is going to be CM test B parse response. You can put anything you want in the suffix. Something unique and recognizable so that you know which model you're using. <laughs> so yeah. Press OK. And let's run this. Excellent. So now, training has begun. As you can see, the status right now is created. We are looking for the status to be complete. Uh, you see there is no finished at, there is no fine-tuned model uh, ID, and this is what's necessary for us to actually use the model. What you need to do in this case is to just save this fine-tuning job ID, copy this, and then jump into step number three, which is waiting. And here 
you can go to this particular URL and then substitute the fine tuning job ID. This is a get uh, authorization bearer uh, and API key. Everything's the same. Press OK and run this a few times and wait until it is processed. I mean, right now this is running. So let's wait a few minutes until this is complete. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes or so, and our model has finished training. So let's run this. And as you can see, now we've got our fine-tuned model that we can finally use, which is really, really, really good news. So let's copy this and let's perform some testing. So let's go into this. Let's change our model. Let's ask it a question. Let's stick with the same question. And one, one thing that I want to point out is, you see, I have temperature set to really, really, really high. So that means that it should, by default, if we're going to use a default model, give us a more creative, elaborate answer. Yet, our training, if you see, it's really, like, succinct, right? It's like really short answers. They're not elaborate. Let's see how this works on the trained model first. Run. Awesome. Let's see what the answer is. Give or take a few. Like that really matters. Fantastic. Let's change this to, let's say, ChatGPT4 or Turbo or whatever. Let's run the same thing. And I'm expecting a really elaborate answer here. Yeah, exactly, right? So it's super, super, super long. That's basically it. Hope you've enjoyed this short and sweet tutorial. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, thanks.